something that is in orbit. And as I said, if an object is taken from the surface of the Earth up to a certain height, but it's not in orbit, you do it one way. When it's in orbit, you have to do it a different way. Is it any more complicated? No, it's, it's actually sometimes a bit easier. So this is what I got. I've got an object on the surface of the Earth. This time, the mass of the object is 60 kilograms, not 50 kilograms. I've taken the object up to this height, and I've given you that distance relative to the center of the Earth, which is what you need. So not an altitude, I've given it to you right from the center. It's 7 times 10 to the 6 meter. Uh, the object is at a height that's the radius of the Earth, because it's sitting right there. And what I want to do is find out uh, how much work it's going to take to put it in orbit, and find out how fast it's going to be pushed in order to get into orbit. And again, that's not realistic. You can't take an object of 60 kilograms and throw it up at a certain speed and expect it to go into orbit because we've got air resistance. But this is the beginning part of sort of planetary mechanics. So if I look at my example here with the chicken as I used before, I need to know how much energy it has where it is and how much energy it has where it needs to be and what the difference is. But in this case, when it's up here, it doesn't have just gravitational energy. It has gravitational energy and kinetic energy. Is that going to make it any more complicated? No, actually when you add these two up, and you can probably find the derivation somewhere online, but when you add these two up, it ends up giving you a new formula. The total energy of an object in orbit is negative one half gmm over r. So it's very simple, that's the formula. So how is it different than before? I calculated the gravitational energy of the chicken here using the total energy of gravity, negative gmm over r. I calculated the gravitational energy here using um, negative gmm over r, because it's not moving. But in this height, at this altitude over here, it's moving. So instead of just using this formula, this formula applies here because it's not moving. This formula applies here because it is moving. So it's going to change it a little bit. I have this half to deal with. Let's start our calculation. Okay, what I got to do is I want to find the A, find the work to go into orbit. So I need the total energy at A, which in this case is the gravitational at A, because it only has gravitational energy at A. It's not in orbit and it's not moving. So that equals negative G M M over R and I'm going to use 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11 for the gravitational constant. Um, M is going to be the mass of the Earth times the mass of the satellite, which is 60 kilograms in this case. And what R do I use? Well, that's the surface of the Earth. The distance from the center of the Earth would be the radius of the Earth. So I'm going to use that R. If you calculate it, you should get negative 3.7 times 10 to the 9 joules. Now we need to find the total energy at B. The total energy at A was just the gravitational because that's the only kind of energy I had. The total energy at B, well it's in orbit and it has height, so it's kinetic plus gravity, but I got this great formula here that simplifies everything. If it's in orbit, this is the total energy. So it's going to be negative one half gmm over r. And keep in mind that um, the R in this case is this, the radius of orbit, because it's up here now. So I plug that in, and I should get negative 1.7 times 10 to the 9 joules. The mistake I get a lot on tests is that people find the total here, they use negative gmm over r. They find the total here in orbit, but they just say it's gmm over r, like they did when it was just sitting there or put up there. It's in orbit. When an object's in orbit, the total energy is given by that formula. Okay, just like my chicken here, how much did I add to the 50, negative 50 to get to negative 20? I found the difference in those two was 30 joules. That's how much kinetic energy I had to add. So, we want to find the difference. The change in the total energy to work is the change in the total energy, which is the total at B minus the total at A. If you work that out, it's B minus A. Don't lose track of the negatives. Negative 1.7 times 10 to the 9, to the 9 minus negative 3.7 times 10 to the 9. You'll end up with an answer that is positive 2.0 times 10 to the 9. And I know some of you are doing these calculations and saying, my number's are a little bit off. I've done some rounding. I'm just trying to make the point clear of what we're doing. So this is how much work it takes 
I have to add that much energy to the object here to get it to go up in there and it will go into orbit. Well, part B, find the velocity to go in orbit. As I said before, with energy, when you're asked to find the velocity, you're really asked to find the kinetic energy. Just set it equal to 1 half mg squared and you can find the velocity. So for V, how much kinetic energy must I add to this thing to get it to go up in orbit? Well, it's sitting here, it has so much energy, it's sitting here, it has so much energy, I had to add 2 times 10 to the 9 joules. So that could have been done as kinetic energy. 2.0 times 10 to the 9 equals 1 half mv squared. This is the mass of the satellite, which is 60 kilograms. If you plug into that and solve for it, you will get that the velocity is 8160 meters per second. And that's how we find uh, the velocity to go into 